She was born roughly around the 1850s in Maryland. Maryland was a slave state. Um, early records indicate that she was from Anne Arundel County, which was also predominantly a slave state. They did have a significant population of free blacks, though, so she may well have been born free, but it's difficult to ascertain the origins. Most black people were really vulnerable, and if you committed a crime or stepped out of line, it would be really easy for people to find ways to enslave you uh, and take away your rights and to brutalize you. Hannah Mary Tabbs has kind of come up against this backdrop, right? She'd have been about 15 during the Civil War. And at the close of the Civil War, it kind of finds her as a young woman with a baby in tow. Now, the story or the narrative around this is that this is her niece. Um, but the girl's described as a mulatto. There's not a lot of evidence that this is someone other than perhaps Hannah Mary's own child. But what's interesting to me about her is that for a young woman traveling with this baby by herself, she makes her way up from Maryland um, into Baltimore, meets and marries an older man who actually is a really good guy. He's a hardworking man. It's a smart move for her because it gives her kind of a measure of respectability. Right now she's married, she's missus. This was really important to most black women during the time period. So the rhetoric is that black women are the lowest of the low, right? And that this is what also makes them vulnerable to sexual victimization. So black women's adherence to these sort of ideas of respectability and particularly kind of chastity and marriage and motherhood and virtue they sort of deployed it as a way to guard against some of those stereotypes, right? We're not low women, we're not easily accessible, and they hoped that comporting in this way would protect them um, from rape and sexual assault. And you have Hannah Mary Tabbs embodying that on one level, right? For all intents and purposes, she's a married woman, she is raising her orphaned niece, Right. Um, but in reality, it's evidence that this niece is, in fact, her daughter. That's probably the result of some sort of illegitimate liaison. And also she's having an affair with this younger man. But for me, I feel like this kind of story, ironically, is sort of it's super important because it is the height of of testimony to her overall humanity, right? I want black women to have the space to be sentient beings, right? To be profoundly flawed, deeply troubled, and complicated, right? That to me, that is humanity, and that it's important for us to be able to look at that, that we shouldn't need to be angels or have halos shining over our heads to be worthy of historical engagement. And I think that in much the same ways that I don't think black people need to be saints in order not to be killed by police um, or to be, you know, unduly and harshly punished by the justice system.